Welcome back, everybody. I think it's time to do a Will It Start episode on the Squatch 253 channel here. So, you know, we got the old 5U parts machine out here. I want to know if this thing's going to make smoke or not. So, a few pre-checks we're going to do. Of course, we're not going to try and run the starting engine today because of that excessive crankshaft end play. But still, we just want to make sure, yeah, there's good oil in there. does not smell like gasoline. We'll check the diesel. Oh, yeah, plenty of oil on that stick. It's black, but not getting any hints of fuel so we don't have to worry about any dilution in there already made sure we are good on coolant so that's ready to go we've got half a tank of fuel in there and just a couple other things to look at I always like to check these injection pumps for oil because they're often ignored oh yeah we've got oil in there usually these things are dry because the the seal up here goes out and it all runs into the diesel engines crankcase but we're good on the injection pump. Check the transmission dipstick here. And, oh yeah, we're at the full mark. So good on the back end. Another thing you wanna do, which I've already done off camera, but pull this plug here and this plug here. That's your uh, fluid fill for the final drives. You want to see the gear oil just up into the opening on each side. So. Both the finals are full on this as well. And another thing I've done off camera to save you guys the boring details is loosened the oil drain plug down here just enough to make it dance on the threads a little bit to see if there's any water that's settled out in the bottom of the pan. On any machine that's sat for a long time, I do like to do that because condensation can form just from the temperature changes or maybe something happened where some water leaked in. I like to make sure there's none of that on the bottom because if you start spinning this engine over and there's a big slug of like non-oil liquid down there, something that doesn't have any lubricity value to it, that's the first thing that's going to go through all your bearings. So no water in the engine at all. That's a very, very good sign. Coming in from the back, I also did the same thing to the transmission drain plug up there and also to the drain plug on each final drive so we don't have any water standing at any low points at all in this whole tractor so very very good sign now the only other thing I want to do before we try and start this is get this cover off the side of the injection pump and I want to make sure we don't have any plungers that are stuck which would cause the fuel rack to stay closed and prevent this from starting so got the compression released what we want to look for is to make sure every one of these plungers goes up and then returns back down so let me get you guys a little bit closer there maybe we can get a better view okay i see three going up four's going up three went back down that's a good deal doesn't feel like the compression release is entirely working on this. Okay, four's going down, two is on the way up. Heading back down, that's good. I see one going up. Yeah, we're still pushing against compression, so we got some valve linkages that aren't quite right up in that cylinder head, but. All right. Our rack is not stuck, so if any one of those would have went up and stayed there, well, that means that it also can't twist. And when the rack opens and closes that rack bar is going to move them back and forth and twist those plungers but all that stuff's looking good so we'll put the side cover back on okay side cover back on we're ready to buck so I did get the compression release figured out too so I had it there before well it turns out it's all sticky just got to take it a little bit further. Once you get it all the way, then we can wheel this thing over effortlessly. So all that does work after all. That's a, that's a very good sign. So what we're going to do now is hook it to the red tractor and with the compression off, just drag this thing around, see if we build oil pressure, watch for fuel pressure, just kind of get everything pre-lubed again. And once we, uh, once we get that far, then we'll pop that compression release back off and put it in gear and see if we can't start it. Watch 
think it makes a turn. We should be fuel off, but I saw a lot of smoke coming out of there. We got oil pressure, that's good. been wheeling over pretty good even though I've got the fuel off I still see quite a bit of smoke coming out so we might not have the shutoffs perfectly adjusted on the rack anyhow but I think it's about time honestly just a little bit of warmth in the cylinder head see what happens now we're going full compression we're gonna try fuel on
That didn't start up too bad at all. Look at that, it runs clean. Fuel pressure, peg. Oil pressure's excellent, man, I'm liking it. That thing runs pretty clean. Get anything onto the ground. That thing runs pretty nice. What can I say? We made use of our, our chain hooks that someone unceremoniously put on the back of the seat. Let's see how it drives. Alright, forward for the clutch brake. Start out in first. We won't get too uh, dangerous right off the bat. First does well. Second. Oh, this thing's growly in the back end though. Well, that diesel sounds good. Try third. Dangerous right fourth gear. Cuts right along. All right, against my better judgment, we're going for the top notch. There we go. Fifth gear.
pulls good on a lower idle. Got to be careful because our shutoff on the fuel position might not be in time with the detent, so we don't want to shut it off because we'll have to pull it again. Oh, that's about as low as it goes where it wants to shut off, so there are some governor adjustments that have to be done, but I tell you what, it actually drives pretty nice aside from that really loose bevel shaft. Honestly, I was really surprised this started as well as it did, and even at a lower idle, Fuel pressure gauge is still pegged. Tell you what, old 4177 does pretty well. It is a runner. Boy, that engine sounds great. Especially after setting for as long as it has. Even at a lower idle, fuel oil pressure still pegged. I think the temp gauge is stuck there. I'm pretty sure it's read that ever since we hauled it home, so that's not accurate, but track stayed on, that's a good thing. One, two, three, four, five, and reverse, all work. Yeah, that back end is growly, but yeah, we know that there's a whole lot of bearing wear back there, the way those steering levers jump around, and yeah, we got like this sprocket is extremely loose on the shaft. The whole back end of this thing's pretty well worn out, I think, but we got a good front half and a decent undercarriage, so all in all, pretty happy with this little five view. We'll go park this up and yeah, cover it for the winter. It's definitely gonna be, well, we'll be doing something with it, I'll guarantee you that. Thanks for watching everybody.